silent prayer. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, the United States, States of America, America. And, and, to the Republic, and to the Republic for which it stands, stands one nation, one nation under, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to move that we approve of the minutes of the previous session. Second. Commissioner Drehaus? Yes. Commissioner Samarduma? Yes. Commissioner Parks? Yes. Thank you. Uh, we've got a couple of folks on the line today to give us updates. Uh, the first is the Interim Commissioner of Public Health for Hamilton County, Greg Kesterman. Uh, as always, Greg, thank you for being on. Um, please give us the updates by way of the numbers and anything else you'd like to bring to our attention. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, we'll start with uh, the numbers. Um, here in Hamilton County, we are up to 1,527 cases. Uh, I, before I move on from that, um, we know that we will see a lot more cases in the weeks to come as we are increasing testing. So anyone that used to have mild or moderate symptoms uh, was not able to get tested. And as we are shifting in this pandemic, we now have some capacity to test those individuals. So don't be alarmed as we see this number continue to rise. We will continue, though, to watch the hospitalizations, which in Hamilton County, we have 305. And deaths uh, here in Hamilton County, we're up to 93. We'll watch those two numbers very closely as they will be another key indicator as we move uh, into mm -hmm. the reopening up of Ohio. In our jurisdiction, um, so our jurisdiction excludes the city of Cincinnati, Norwood, and Springdale. We have 808 cases, of which 332 have recovered. Um, I'll talk briefly about contact tracing. We've had a lot of great success this week um, with getting folks trained and up, up to speed so they can begin getting scheduled and helping my team out with the great task of contact tracing. I'd like to thank the commissioners and county administrator Jeff Aluto uh, for working with some of those furloughed employees, getting them back to work and um, bringing them in uh, into our shop as contact tracers. This is such an asset. I think we trained 24 people this, this week and uh, they will be scheduled full-time beginning Sunday. Um, so that will take a lot of burden off my team. We also were successful at training some folks that are bilingual, which will help us reach uh, more populations with our efforts and to make sure that we're able to communicate effectively when we're doing our contact tracing. It's a lot, it's a lot um, nicer when you have one person stick with a family throughout their entire uh, quarantine period. And by utilizing bilingual folks as opposed to a translation line, we're able to create that relationship and, and just be a little bit more effective in making sure we're able to, to meet them where they are at. Um, and the last I'll note is the state is hiring some contact tracers as well. So these furloughed employees that we're using with the county are really important because uh, they won't leave and go work for the state. The state's hiring folks around all throughout Ohio, and uh, we're, we're a little fear fearful that some of the work we're putting in and training might, might be lost uh, to the state. It's a good thing, but um, I like the consistency that we're able to get by working with the county directly. Uh, if anybody gets any complaints and wants to forward them, public health is managing these complaints. Uh, you can very, uh, you can simply send them to hcph.org. Uh, the beauty of this is the complaint is not within our jurisdiction. We're happy to forward it to the right health department so that uh, the folks that have issues, we're just able to get them uh, seamlessly to where they need to go to help try and get that resolved. I'll stop there, Commissioner, and happy to answer any questions or cover anything else you would like me to. Um, thank you, Greg, and thank you for your continued work on this. Um, I do think that um, as the directives come down from the governor and the director of health at the state level, um, and as we continue to open up, the health department's going to get super busy uh, related to how people are operating, um, how employees are being uh, treated in the workplace, how customers, are, you know, what people need to do. So I don't envy you that, Greg. I know uh, your team is up for it, but man, it's going to get busy. So I'm um, glad that we could all kick in a little bit and bring some um, contact tracers over to your shop to help out a little bit. So um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Commissioner Summer Dumas. Any comments or questions for Greg? Thank you, Madam President. No questions, but just Greg, I think it's great that um, bilingual component that you added in is awesome. Thank you, Commissioner. Mm -hmm. um, Commissioner Hart? I have no questions, but, uh, but thank you, Greg, for the work that you're doing and um, 
and uh, I think great for the contract tracers, and and also okay. the um, for for the bilingual. People. Thank you, Commissioner. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, Greg. Well, now you have to go back to work. So, <laughs> Greg is right, one of the you, biggest guys in the county right now. So, thanks so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. We also have Nick Crosley on the line, the director of the Emergency Management Association, probably the second busiest person in the county. Um, so, uh, Nick, please give us an update as to um, your operations. So, we continue to work uh, aggressively with, with the public health departments on uh, the, the biggest thing we're known for is the uh, distribution of personal protective equipment. Uh, we are focused on uh, two different tracks. One is uh, managing the uh, state's distribution when they send down uh, supplies from the state that comes with guidance to the public health departments who then give it to us. Uh, that primarily goes to hospitals uh, and then drop down from there as first responders and then nursing homes and then others. Uh, so really the, the bulk of what the state sends us is going to the hospitals, uh, mainly because that's centered around uh, the preferred delivery is N95s, although that's getting fewer and far between uh, at this point. And then uh, the county has an aggressive uh, program to procure uh, PPE for our, uh, 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 both the county agencies and departments, as well as uh, the community agencies. And so as, as, as you, the commissioners know, uh, we have a pretty broad definition of who that is. Our goal is to help work with and protect our most vulnerable uh, populations. And so we work with everybody from the YWCA to the Urban League to the, um, I've got a whole list of, of organizations. We've seen an, we've seen an increase uh, as businesses reopening uh, with, um, uh, we've helped a few dental practices, a lot of dentists donated uh, and other, other kind of medical providers. Uh, donated when we were originally asking for requests. So we are uh, within the realm of what we have in stock, we are entertaining requests from uh, individual medical providers uh, as long as we can do that to help them get back on their feet and then get back with their regular suppliers. Uh, again, they're all part of that whole ecosystem that helps protect the public from the virus um, and treat the virus. So uh, we continue to get the word out, especially to community-based organizations across the county spectrum. Uh, so they know that they can call us. Uh, we do, as I was, I was telling a group of fire chiefs this morning, we don't necessarily advertise the link to request PPE. We like for people to call us and have a conversation, sort of what is your focus, uh, what is your client base, um, what, what is your need? And then we can sort of try to match that with, um, uh, with what we have in stock. Um, we are as the, just, and I wanted to sort of reiterate this, that, um, all kinds of businesses are opening and we're not really able to serve beauty salons and restaurants and things like that. Uh, but we are again, focusing on our community based organizations, frontline workers. We have a very broad definition of frontline work, especially in the social service field. Um, we continue to source other materials as well. Uh, so again, for these populations that uh, have a hard time getting out or that uh, caseworkers are going in and finding out that maybe they don't have hand sanitizer or, cleaning materials or other basic needs like that. We continue to source that as well. And as uh, uh, I think I've told you before, we did a big operation with the Council on Aging and put together. Um, so it's, it's a balancing act at our warehouse of not introducing too many outsiders to our warehouse staff. Um, we work very closely with a local company that's, work, that's helping us um, as a donation. And so we put those kits together for them and their workers come by and pick them up and take them out to, to our seniors all over the county. Um, we worked with the United Way, uh, so we're working across the spectrum right now. We, we've seen an increase in the last, I just, I just got an update from my staff of uh, between the numbers I gave you on the 4th to the 7th, uh, we had 15 new organizations. Uh, so we continue to serve the ongoing community-based organizations we've been helping. And then, uh, you know, governments, fire departments, police departments, that kind of thing, public safety. Um, but we're also seeing, like, again, an uptick in, in a few medical providers some funeral homes. Um, uh, uh, so we saw an uptick of 15 new organizations just in the last three days. So the need, uh, as we, you know, we still haven't reached, I don't believe we have reached the, 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 the curve as they call it, or the, the downwards the trend. Uh, so we continue to enhance our operation. Uh, I really appreciate the commissioner's support and, and, and Jeff and, and Holly Christman, 
uh, and, and Joanne Kramer, I like to say that name publicly, and her staff in purchasing um, have really just been phenomenal to work with. Um, we're, we're being as creative as possible with who we work with. Uh, and then if we have to turn somebody down, we do it as gently as possible. Uh, but we're also, especially with these um, private for-profit, you know, that's not a, uh, an issue that we, that we automatically uh, say somebody can't get help, uh, but the medical clinics, but we do, sometimes we hook them up with our vendors. We do encourage them to get back into their regular supply line, uh, focusing more on the social service agencies. I think they are going to see, you know, nursing homes, nursing homes are a big one. We've served over, I think, 85 at this point, um, and we continue to help them. Uh, while they're, they're, I know they're also aggressively working with their vendors as well, uh, but really focusing on the community agencies that didn't see this coming. Um, uh, and we've, I've gotten some feedback. I haven't shared it with you yet. I'm putting it together. Uh, just a lot of, a lot of appreciation uh, to, to me and my agency, but uh, you know, we're very fortunate to have the CARES Act funding. And then of course the direction from the board and from Jeff uh, to be as creative as possible when we're helping commun the community. So that's where we're at at this point. Great, thank you. And thank you for um, sending that list. How often do you send that out to us, Nick? That updated list of who's getting the PPE? It's usually by the Tuesday call that we do. Um, yeah. Just growing, uh, we're, uh, I've added a couple of part-time staff uh, to help manage the phone calls, but it's, it's growing. And I think as we open back up, um, we're gonna see an increased need. And I think focusing on these social service providers, especially, um, uh, will help us stay focused and, and, and continue to fill that need. Mm -hmm. So just to give context, the call that Nick is referring to is a call with all the municipalities throughout the county. All 49 are welcome to jump on the call, and many, many of them do. And so we are providing uh, PPE for not only the nursing homes and the social service agencies out in these various communities throughout the county, but also to the jurisdictions themselves uh, particularly for firefighters and police officers um, out in those areas. Are we serving every fire district at this point, Nick? Uh, yes, and, and uh, I actually am re reiterating with the fire departments, and I just had a call with all the police chiefs yesterday to reach out to their, if they can do it together with, if they have a fire department partner agency or department to facilitate with them. To your credit, I mean that's that's really something when there are 49 jurisdictions in the county. So that's saying something. Uh, I know not all of them have their own fire departments, but many of them do. So, um, any questions or comments, Commissioner Summero Dumas? Thank you, Madam President. Uh, no comments, but just to thank you so much, Nick, for all your hard work. Same here. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, yes. Yeah, same here. No questions. Just thank you, Nick. I know that you are super busy, and you guys are doing a great job. Thank you, Commissioner. All right. Thanks, Nick. Appreciate you being on. Thank you. Um, we have a presentation. Um, it's a proclamation declaring May 2020 as Building Safety Month. Um, and so you should have all seen this um, proclamation. Um, I'm, I'm going to read a little bit of it. I know James Noyes is on the call. Um, and I guess virtually he'll be receiving the proclamation. No photos today, James, sorry. Um, so this really talks, uh, let me read this a little bit of it. So it says, whereas our county is committed to recognizing that our growth and strength depends on the safety and economic value of the homes, buildings, and infrastructure that serve our citizens, both in everyday life and in times of natural disaster, and whereas our confidence in the structural integrity of these buildings that make up our community is achieved through the devotion of vigilant guardians building safety and fire prevention officials, architects, engineers, builders, tradespeople, design professionals, laborers, plumbers, and others in the construction industry who work year round to ensure the safe construction of buildings. And then it goes on to say, whereas Building Safety Month is sponsored by the International Code Council to remind the public about the critical role of our community's largely unknown protectors of public safety, our local code officials, to assure us of safe, efficient, and livable buildings that are essential to keep, Ameri keep America prosperity. Uh, whereas each year in observance of Building Safety Month, Americans are asked to consider the commitment to improve building safety and economic investment 
at home and in the community and to acknowledge the essential service provided to all of us by local and state building departments, fire prevention bureaus, and the federal agencies in protecting lives and property. Now, therefore, we, the Board of County Commissioners, do hereby proclaim the month of May 2020 as Building Safety Month. Accordingly, we encourage our citizens in Hamilton County to join with their communities in participation of Building Safety Month activities. Uh, those, we, what, what they may at this virtual moment, um, signed by all three of us. So, uh, James, I know you are here representing planning and development, um, the, the uh, department of the county that does so much of this work. So thank you for the work that you are do doing. I hope you pass it along to your team. And I would um, welcome your comments related to Building Safety Month. Great. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam President and Board, uh, for uh, the uh, proclamation. Um, and uh, that was the short version, correct? Not the long version that yes, you read. <laughs> I lopped off quite a bit. <laughs> uh, I, I think everybody appreciates it. Uh, and uh, I also uh, am representing Bruce Crace today, our building official. Um, I don't think he was able to make it onto the call today, but um, I'm sure that he would have some comments of his own, uh, being the county's uh, chief building official. Um, the uh, uh, the importance of building safety month, um, and, and you had said it in in the proclamation, the essential nature of the uh, building officials and the building inspectors and the plan reviewers. Um, you know, during this crisis, uh, we continued operations. As you know, construction continued. We continued to get building permits. There wasn't a day where we did not have building permits. There wasn't a day that we didn't have building inspection for this essential industry of construction. Uh, that is one industry which has continued through this. Uh, we have to continue to make sure that we make these uh, sites safe um, uh, for, the, for the public and for those who are gonna inhabit those. Uh, so it's very important that we continue this work and also proclaiming Building Safety Month uh, is a recognition um, of the important work that code officials um, including building inspectors, building um, uh, plans examiners, and officials uh, make and uh, work with the general public uh, and our customers. Uh, our work uh, continues. We have the same amount of inspections as we did last year at this time. So we are working hard um, to serve the public and the county. So uh, without any additional comments from Bruce Grace, I do want to thank the board and I'll be brief with my comments today. Thank you very much. Well said, uh, Director Noyes. Thank you for your comments. I think sometimes we do overlook the importance of uh, building safety and the work of the Planning and Development Department and ensuring that that's happening all over Hamilton County in partnership with the local governments um, in many, many jurisdictions. So thanks so much for the work that you are doing. Um, commissioners, any comments? I have no comments. Thank you. No comment. Just um, thank you, James. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, thank you. Appreciate it, James. We'll get you that hard copy uh, if you don't have it. Jackie, I'll, I'll get that over to you. Um, all right, uh, speaking of Jackie, uh, do we have any public comment today, Jackie? I have received none. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll move then to comments of the commissioners. Commissioner Summero Dumas. Thank you, Madam President. I have a few comments today. Um, I received some communication from uh, the office of Councilwoman Jan Michelle Kearney, and she asked if I would share this with the commissioners and also those that are listening and all the residents in Hamilton County. Um, as we know, uh, the black population has been impacted um, the high, in the highest rates uh, with this virus, not only health-wise, but also economically. Many small and minority owned businesses, as long um, also as women owned businesses have not received funds from the um, stimulus package. Um, she's calling on all Cincinnatians to support black owned businesses every week on Thursdays. And this is Thursday, so you can get started today. Um, when I say get started, you can, you can always get on the internet and look at businesses there. Um, as part of uh, this Buy Black um, initiative, is that me squeaking? You hear the squeaking? Okay, you can hear me okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, as far as the uh, Buy Black initiative, um, it's hashtag Cincy Buy Black Thursdays. 
And um, there is also a, a black business directory that is listed on the city of Cincinnati's website. So you can get on there and it will tell you um, some of the businesses within the city. Um, and when you support these businesses on Thursdays, she's asking that you mention on social media, hashtag Cincy by Black Thursdays, what, what uh, business that you uh, were uh, supporting so everybody will know. And also if you'd like to be part of the directory, you can call her office over at City Hall. So I wanted to let everybody know about that. Uh, in addition, I wanted to make a comment about uh, the budget hits uh, that we probably we'll see very soon, uh, not only from the virus, but also as the governor announced the $775 million um, cuts that he's getting ready to make. As we know, the county has not rebounded from the local government funding not being um, added on to. We have not received our significant <laughs> Our, our amount from there has never been uh, given back to us. But we'll, I think we, and we know that there will be a double whammy as it relates to his cuts are gonna trickle down, I'm sure, to us as a county and, and to other counties. So um, I just really wanna let the people know and our constituents know that we're doing the best we can with our budget, but sometimes our hands will be tied as a state um, maybe indicate some things that will impact us. Um, and in addition, I personally wrote an email to Treasurer Robert Gary um, and to talk about the reprieve that he was trying to give the residents as it relates to the real estate taxes. I certainly appreciate his efforts. Um, it extended the taxes for about 24 days. I uh, wrote him an email and asked him to at least look at a 60-day reprieve I know during that result, having a delay in our county funding or our county receipts, but I think we have a little more options for some of the residents as it relates to their ability to pull their monies together to pay their real estate taxes. I have not heard from him yet, but I'm sure he will respond. Uh, he, he really listens well, and I've, I've been knowing him since I came on the commission and he is a great guy and he I think he'll do the best that he can do. Um, lastly, um, I wanted, I had a birthday yesterday, uh, a big mark. Happy birthday. <laughs> thank you. And I wanna thank all family, friends, constituents, public who uh, posted things, emails and sent uh, uh, phone calls and cards. So I just wanna thank everybody for that. And that will end my report, Madam President. Thank you. Commissioner Park. Um, thank you, Madam President. I have no comment. All right. Thank you. Um, so I just have a couple. Um, I wanted to, once again, big thank you to county employees um, who may or may not be working from home, those that have been redeployed, those that are out on furlough. I mean, this has been a huge adjustment for the county workforce. And so I want to thank everyone for their patience and their willingness to um, do what we all can uh, to make it through um, the pandemic, especially here in Hamilton County. Uh, and thanks to uh, Director uh, or Administrator Aludo, uh, Director Crosley, and Commissioner Kesterman, all who are working really literally 24-7 on trying to figure out ways to move the county forward in an unprecedented time. It's really been, um, it's just been a pleasure working with all three of you and, um, and the other commissioners as well as we try to figure out um, what's next here on the horizon and how do we do our best work in the middle of a pandemic for Hamilton County citizens and taxpayers. So thank you all, especially for your work. Um, I do wanna touch on, I was gonna touch on the property tax relief as well. So um, the deadline has been extended to July 17th. Um, the treasurer only has the authority to do it for that long. Um, so I know that in part drove his decision uh, to land on that date. Um, in order to extend that beyond um, June 17th, um, he would have to petition the tax commissioner and get permission from the tax commissioner to do that. Um, I don't know if the treasurer and, I, and Commissioner Summer Dumas, maybe you will find this out, he has any intention to do that. 
Um, but I, too, am grateful for the reprieve for folks that are looking at property tax bills um, and having a challenging time paying those at right now. So it's a little bit of a reprieve. There are financial consequences, as you note. Um, part of our budget is made up through property tax revenue, um, but particularly hit by that are schools and some of the levy recipients. And so we do need to be cognizant of um, any uh, kind of delays in the financial impact there for the um, agencies that rely on those property taxes. But I want to echo your comments related to the treasurer. Um, that's all I've got. Um, Administrator Aludo, what do you have today? Uh, thank you, commissioners. Um, so just uh, to echo uh, uh, Commission President Driehaus's thoughts, I do want to also uh, just thank uh, all public employees. Uh, this actually in, in prior years would have been uh, Public Service Recognition Week. Uh, we have um, some of the, the formalities around that that we typically observe, the awarding of Employee of the Year, that type of thing. We're pushing off into later this year, just as I know some of the um, uh, governmental organizations and public sector organizations are pushing off some of the recognition for that um, later, later on into the year, but did just want to use the opportunity uh, to thank all county employees for all their work during this time and, and all public employees everywhere, um, regardless of what level of government they are serving at for uh, or serving in for all the work that they are doing in this time. Uh, so with that, uh, commissioners, there are two by leave items on your agenda today. They are both under human resources. Uh, the first one, they, they're both uh, uh, insurance issues. The first one related to the purchase of property insurance and the second one related to law, enf law enforcement liability insurance uh, for the county. Uh, I believe that Rodney Laughlin or Frank Spataro are on the line to uh, discuss these in more depth if there are questions. Um, so I will turn it over to either Frank or Rodney if they are on. Uh, uh, Rodney, I believe, is on the line. Um, uh, Rodney, are you um, able to respond? So Rod Rodney, could you just walk us through both of these uh, for the board, please? Sure. Uh, thank you. Good afternoon. Um, the first by leave item is our property insurance program uh, for all of our county structures. Uh, we uh, went out and shopped on the open market this year because we will be entering into a new policy. And we had 12 interested parties, uh, five of which provided quotes. Liberty Mutual came in as the lowest and best quote um, at uh, $998,587. Uh, $998, this, this will be a pretty significant uh, rate increase, increase over last year. And, uh, but uh, it's purely market driven and not uh, uh, as a result of a poor loss record. Um, Primarily, the insurance companies are just looking to uh, recover losses and premium or uh, profits. Uh, over the last couple of years, you know, we've had the wildfires out west, flooding down south, and uh, tornadoes down south, and then the heartland. Um, this also uh, was a little bit more than we anticipated. Uh, I was expecting a 20 to 30 percent uh, rate increase because it is a really hard market right now. Uh, so this also includes a, uh, a budget adjustment uh, in the general fund and also the two stadium funds. So if there's any questions, uh, we are only going to, by the way, we're only going to lock into a one-year uh, policy. And next year we're going to go out and shop our program on the market again and try to get a better rate. So if there's any questions, is, I'll be happy. Yeah. What is the typical time frame for a policy? Uh, typically, a property policy runs three years, uh, but we're just going to we're just going to lock into a to a one year policy at this time. Uh, we believe these rates are are high, and perhaps maybe next year we'll we'll be able to uh, shop on the open market and get a much better rate. Okay. Um, questions or comments? Thank you, thank you, Madam President. Um, Rodney, if we had gone with a three year, would the price be lower? Would the cost be less? No, we would actually have to lock into this high rate. 
that's the only way they'll do a, a complete three-year policy is if we lock in at this rate. Uh, we think this rate's kind of high, even though this was the yeah. lowest and best quote that we received at this time. Like I said, the market's really bad right now. The insurance market, is it's a very hard market. They're trying to recover losses over the last couple of years. Uh, so we're seeing lower capacities and higher premiums. And uh, we, we, we kind of anticipated this coming, but maybe not to this degree. So I think it's best to just lock into a, to a one-year policy. Okay, and one additional question. Um, you were saying you thought it might be a 30 to 40 percent increase, and I think what I was reading, it was more like a 53, 54 percent increase. Uh, that's correct. Okay. Yeah, it was a little bit more, and that's that's the reason for the budget adjustment. Okay. So I just so want to just, make sure. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Rodney. No, I'm sorry. That's the reason we had to uh, make an, a budget adjustment. We really right. weren't anticipating this much of a of an increase. Right. And the reason why I bring that up, I already knew the answer, but I think it's really important that we let our people know that are listening uh, what the increase was. So as we look at other things that we need to do that maybe we might not be able to do, uh, it was a 54%, not a 20 or 25%. So I just want to us to keep yeah. the, the cost of things. Thank you. I, I do want to say, though, we do have a stellar loss uh, experience. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've had very few losses. Uh, we have a very robust uh, building maintenance plan, inspection and testing, safety programs, and, and risk policy. So this mm -hmm. really wasn't something uh, that was, it was purely market driven and not really right. uh, as a result of a poor loss experience. Oh, yeah, and I heard that earlier, and so I'm not at all indicating that we're not doing a good job, but even when we do a, a good job, we got a 54% increase. So thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Thank you. Commissioner Park? Uh, um, so, Rodney, I'd like to circle back to Commissioner Summerall Dumas's question, and that was, so there is no price difference between a one-year contract in a three-year contract? Uh, no, there's not. Uh, actually, we would have to lock in. If we went with a three-year contract or policy, you know, we would have to lock into this high rate. I, we believe, along with our uh, broker's consultant, that this is, this is a pretty high rate. So we think it'd be best just to lock in for one year and actually go out to market again next year. Okay. Thank you. All right, great. Thank you. I um, appreciate that. So, Jeff, uh, related to this is item number. Is this item number? This is item number one of this is a, item. This is by leave one, right? Yeah. And we also yeah. have by leave two, which is uh, authorizing the purchase of law enforcement liability insurance. So, Rodney, do you want to hit on that one real quick as well, please? Yes. Um, yeah, uh, by lead number two is our law enforcement liability uh, for uh, the sheriff uh, or uh, the sheriff agreements for the surrounding townships uh, for providing pr patrol and law, law enforcement uh, services to, to those surrounding townships. So part of the agreement calls for us to carry law enforcement liability. I do have some good news on this one. <laughs> Um, the, uh, the premiums, the premium actually decreased uh, ten thousand dollars this year. Wow! Yeah, that's good. So, all right. So, with, 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 yeah. So, with that, Commissioner, those are those are the only by leave we, uh, uh, that are human resources related. We do have okay. um, an, an MSD item to discuss, but the uh, if you wanted to hit these two together, yeah. Uh, for the sake of Rodney yeah. and Frank's time, uh, the administration does recommend approval of both items. I had All right. Madam, uh, Madam yeah. President, this one. Is that a one-year liability insurance, uh, Rodney, for the for the tariffs? Uh, yes, that's okay. correct. Thank you. All right, I'm going to move that we approve a budget adjustment number 17, authorizing the purchase of property insurance program for Hamilton County properties. Second. Commissioner Drehaus? Yes. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Parks? Yes. 
And then I'm also going to um, ask that we approve the resolution authorizing the purchase of a law enforcement liability insurance program for the Hamilton County Sheriff. Second. Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Sir Senator Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Parks? Yes. All right, great. Thank you. Um, by the way, I think I, must, I was checking with Alex. I think I misspoke earlier when we were talking about taxes and property taxes. The new deadline is July 17th, not June 17th. I think I misspoke at one point. So anyway, thanks, Alex, for correcting me. Um, all right, let's move on to our third by lead. This is related to MSC. Uh, Diana Christie and her team are on the line. Um, so Diana, please walk us through this item. Hi, Welcome. yes, good afternoon, everyone. Um, we have today um, legislation for a project um, to be rebid. This is the SSO 700 storage and treatment facility, the disinfection improvements. Um, request today is to approve and appropriate an additional 1 million approximately in construction funding to rebid this consent decree bridge project. Uh, the project, as a reminder, provides chemical disinfection for the SSO 700 tank overflows to minimize E. coli concentrations and improve water quality in the Mill Creek. Um, in addition, the existing facilities UV system uh, is incurring increasing maintenance and repairs with age, increasing the risk of more downtime and ineffective treatment. So um, there's also a, a replacement of the, UC, of the UV system. Uh, with this project. Uh, on April 2nd, the city on behalf of MSD bid the project based on the prior appropriation and uh, we received only two bids. Both bids were in excess of the Ohio statutory limit on uh, a contract award, uh, which is only 10% over the engineer's estimate. Both the bids we received were about 35% over that estimate, which is why we are here today for the additional appropriation. Um, MSD did. Did you say 75? No, 35. Oh. <laughs> oh my Which God. is still a lot, okay. but not 75. Sorry. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, now I feel better because it's not 75. You're like, yeah, well, I was like, okay, well, we're not doing this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sorry. So, um, MSD's analysis um, from what we could tell from the bids, we've concluded that the increase is largely due to the um, aggressive schedule for this project. Um, and changed market conditions. Um, we have had some discussions and looked into this in greater detail. Um, we are not able to confirm or you know, conclude with any certainty that those market conditions um, were impacted by COVID-19 related um, matters. We, we do um, you know, just generally know that the market conditions changed from uh, three or four months ago and that the current uh, bidding market for this project um, only having two bidders, uh, you know, is, is uh, lower than what we would typically see. So that's, um, you know, playing into this somewhat in addition um, to, again, the, the accelerated schedule is really uh, one of the, the primary drivers of the cost increases. Um, in addition, um, you know, it, it's possible that there is some supply chain disruption, um, but we don't have any window into that or what might be driving those costs up. So uh, again, today the um, the request is for the additional appropriations for this project, and I want to um, acknowledge I have Matt Spideri, who is the um, principal engineer at MSD, who can answer a little bit more about some of the, the questions you might have. Can you um, tell us why the expedited time frame? That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. Um, well, I can just state generally that this is um, with um, with many of the bridge projects that we have, we um, have an accelerated schedule um, and due to uh, the time it took to get to award, you know, to the place of having construction legislation, um, the deadline for compliance with the bridge is uh, December 31st, 2020. So I guess I, I understand that, but I'm just wondering, um, well, I guess in that case, I, I, there's a deadline associated with this, so that's the reason for the acceleration, I suppose. Um, I guess then it begs the question, are, are we going to see more of these that have a deadline coming up quickly where we're going to have an expedited schedule and 
potentially then an increased cost? We do have other bridge projects this year that need to go to construction that, um, you know, have, have a similar um, deadline at the end of this year. Um, but I can't say for certain that that would necessitate an increase, you know, that that would translate to a similar increase in the cost. Madam okay. President, if, if I may. Yes. And so, Diana, what I'm trying to understand is the $1 million, <clears throat> excuse me, is in excess of what the engineers had estimated back in, was it December? Uh, I, perhaps Matt can chime in. I, I know it was at least three or four months ago that the engineers estimated. Okay, so, so in three or four yes. months, yes. Um, prices have risen so much that it's a million dollars difference over what we approve. Correct? Um, yeah, let me, let me explain and then I, I would like if Matt can help out. So the, sure. when we do the, um, the engineer's estimates, we're basing that off of, <clears throat> you know, what be the best determination of the costs of, you know, that what the construction costs are going to be um, in a project like this. Um, there are certain things that, you know, will only be dictated once it is competitively bid and the market tells us what those costs are. So um, it's not unusual. And, and again, with only having two bidders here, um, this is not a, a, a large construction project um it's at a you know at a facility and in, in, in terms of some of the other things msd bids so um you know, the competitive nature of it plays into that as well um, but matt can you provide a little more insight on on how the engineer's estimate is uh, developed uh, sure sure good afternoon my name is matt spideri with the metropolitan sewer district and, and diana did a good job of of uh explaining that our uh, engineering team, the consultants that have designed this project, prepare an, a, an estimate to the best of their ability. They reach out to vendors, they reach out to various folks throughout the industry to do the best they can to estimate the costs. We use that dollar figure received from the consultants and bring that forth to the Board of County Commissioners when we request our construction legislation. And after after that funding has been approved by you as the board, we then go out to bid. And frankly, in this case, or in all cases, but especially in this case, the, the bids we receive are what's really dictating the market conditions. So the- um, Can I, are, are you surprised? Are, are you as surprised as I am? Yes, yes. Okay. You know, we, you know, working through with the engineer, and working through the design to get to where we got. And then, you know, like Diana said, that was back in the November, December timeframe of late 19. And we bid it, the bids were opened on April 2nd, I believe. And a lot had happened in those few months. So it was a, we kind of fell on some challenging times. And, you know, we, we, we did talk to each of the bidders to the best, you know, try to get as much information as we can, but, you know, they obviously have certain strategies and weren't divulging 100% of that strategy that's behind their bid. So we tried to get the best information we could, and that's what was included in the request and what Diana shared when she provided the introduction to this. So what, how, how many bids would you expect? And, um, and is, it, is it strange that we only got two? And why do you think that is? Of course, we all thrive on competition. You know, we would love to see four or five bids. So is, and, is that what you normally get? Uh, it depends on the type of project, frankly. Uh, this is a project at a facility, as Diana explained, for disinfection improvements, and UV systems. So it's, it's a little more specialized type of construction and equipment than you would see for a project where we're just installing sewer, if we're extending a sewer or replacing the sewer to enlarge it or things of that, that construction. Uh, th this, to see two wasn't overly shocking in my opinion, but again, we it would be appreciated to always have more than that 
to to have a you know to, to understand that there's more competition out there and to see how those bids could differ as we move forward mm -hmm. and um it is not in our best interest to postpone this anymore because of the deadline with the regulators is that correct that's correct yes yes okay okay because during this time you know if, if we could hold this off and not spend this extra million dollars we certainly would want to. yeah i i would just speak to that in terms of um you know there's no indication in addition to having the deadline i don't think there's any indication on um you know we don't feel confident that it would benefit us to wait in terms of the cost going down uh, even if we didn't have that deadline pending um it, it's really again really difficult to to know that so um given the importance of the project coupled with the deadline we do recommend proceeding commissioner summer do you have any comments or questions yes <laughs> so going last get a lot more questions than usual so um you said december the 31st is a, a project deadline does that mean to start the project is uh, the deadline or to lose the funding no that's the uh substantial completion deadline for the consent decree so okay. completion of you know substantial completion of construction okay that's what i was asking the project or construction okay so um and i heard that um the bids dictate the market price. Okay, so we're going a, a million more. I understand why. Um, but it sounds like the bids were open, what I heard, in April. I put down April the 2nd. And so we're ready to spend another million uh, in, in about 30 days. We decided uh, that that's all we can get is two bids. Um, uh, the bids closed fairly quickly from what I can remember from just being in government when bids are put out. That was a quick closing. Um, and so you, I know you have some comments, so let me uh, kind of finish up. Um, and uh, we had two bidders. Uh, I'm just wondering uh, if we can um, put this out for bid uh, to receive more uh, bids. I know you said it's no benefit for us to wait, but I'm thinking with all these companies that are wanting to build that have lost money, uh, for because of this virus, will jump on the uh, on the project to try to recoup some of the money that they've lost. So um, I really think even if we went out and got a few more bids, we will still meet the deadline of December the thirty first. If you're able to put bids out and close in thirty days. Uh, so I can um, address that. The, the request is um, we are required to rebid this. So we will not be, um, we're not seeking the new appropriation to award based on the bids we received on April 2nd. We will be rebidding okay. the project and they may, we may have more bidders um, and it may not be the same amount. Um, and and at, at our policy that we, um, you know, that we work with the county on our financial policy, if we um, don't need the full allocation of the appropriated dollars, that money is, of course, uh, legislated from a project. So, so what's the necessity of doing it now? What's the urgency of uh, allocating a million now? We have to. Uh, it, it, put it back out to bid and based on the market conditions, yeah. we have to be within 110%, you know, bid can't be over 110% by law. So you, we have to have the allocation before we can award an additional allocation. Our, um, you know, the market is now telling us that we need additional funds. We will go back out to confirm that. And if the bids come in, um, you know, within this new appropriated amount, then we can award the project. So there's an assumption from the market. What the market is saying, we need to add a million on. Even yes. though I said earlier, the bids came in 35% higher than we expected. Um, what would happen, Diana, if we didn't add the other uh, million on when we rebid? If we didn't, if we didn't increase the uh, 
Yeah, the available funds at the end, the bids again came in high. Um, we again wouldn't be able to award it if they were over 110 percent. So, so, so you're basically increasing the engineer's estimate to reflect what we think are the market um, pressures here. And is that what you're saying? So you need the extra million to increase the engineer's um, estimate so that when the bids come back in and they're at a higher amount, we're not over the threshold and we don't have to rebid again. Is that what you're saying? That is what I'm saying, yes, and I wanna make sure, I know that Jack, who is um, has much more experience in, in this process than I do, although I believe I'm speaking correctly. Um, Jack, if you, can you confirm that that is correct uh, in terms of the- Jack, yeah. yes. He's saying yes. yes. Commissioners uh, <laughs> and Diana, yes. Um, I, my, my prior experience uh, since 1990 has been in procurement um, with the city and for most public construction projects, whether they be for sewers or for um, engineering or for any other type of public improvement are market driven for the most part. Um, this project is a bit more specialized. So if you're layering that component on top of the, the market conditions um, that may restrict the bidder, the number of bidders um, simply because others may not have expertise mm -hmm. in this area, but market driven is the principle and the key element that I think MSD wants to convey to the, the commissioners and the market has uh, contracted um, from the standpoint of a, a variety of different um, issues uh, since December. Uh, and, and Jack, can you just confirm in terms of um, we are seeking the 1 million additional appropriation to essentially adjust our estimate so that when we go back to rebid, we have sufficient funds to award, assuming that um, they would be closer to the last bids that we received. By that is, that is correct. Uh, so the, the additional amount, the 1 million, that's the purpose of, of this current legislative request is for addressing that delta, that disparity, in order to try to close the gap and meet potential market conditions that could occur from uh, the next rebid. Um, and you know, each time, it's always a question. Are we meeting the, the sufficiency of what the market will respond to? For roughly 80 to 90% of the time, um, and possibly even higher, uh, 90, 99% of the time, we're either within that range or there's more that has been appropriated and we have a surplus left. Um, in this case, and in a number of cases over the years, in my experience, this occurs very rarely. Um, and the only way to address it uh, in order to get the project moving, uh, and this is a, a necessary project, it's a consent decree and a bridge project with a defined deadline is to address it from a, um, an appropriation standpoint. Um, Jack, on, um, well, maybe I should ask Diana, uh, Madam President, if I can. Um, the 30% mm -hmm. over bid uh, for both bidders were 35% over. Was there like 20%, 35%, another one's 40% over? And what were those numbers? Were they like 12 million over or 3 million over? How, what were the numbers? If, if I can address that, Commissioner. Yes. Uh, so sure. the, the bids came in, uh, I believe the range was, was 33 to 35%, um, according to the bidding information. So what it was very close. It was within one to 2% of each other. So the bidders were very, very close, which is another indicator that the market um, is reflective of, um, you know, the, these costs are higher in their opinion than what our estimate estimate has been. So Jack, what is the 35 over? Is it 10 million? Was it 5 million? What was the number over? Um, it was- I, I can answer that if you'd like, uh, Jack. Sure, uh, So uh, Commissioner, when we came for our original construction legislation, we requested and you granted or approved $2,937,700. We received two bids. One bid 
was for an even $4 million. And the other bid was for $3,971,000. So they, those two bids were only $29,000 apart. Mm -hmm. But they were both just about a million over our previous construction legislation request uh, for originally. So our additional million will allow the lowest bidder to really come in for bid on target. You are correct, but mm -hmm. as Diana and or Jack had said, we still have to rebid this project. Oh, I understand that. I understand. Yeah. That. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I just think, you know, uh, I hear what the market is saying and I understand that, but the market, uh, of course, I'm not an expert in that, but the market is so different now. With, the, the world is different and what we might think what happened as it relates to, I'm thinking supply and demand that people may, and it is a specified task, I understand that, but people may just be able to get a product. Um, and I just don't understand, I don't know. Uh, I don't know, Madam President, really. Well, um, I, I guess I, I have a, a, I don't think it's an opposite, opposite concern mm -hmm. so much as that, it, it, as it relates to kind of what we learned in the very beginning was mm -hmm. that um, the deadline is driving some of uh, the cost. And so my concern is that if we have other bridge projects that have the same deadline, mm -hmm. we need to get them going perhaps as quickly as possible so that we're not looking at that, you know, element of, you know, potential, um, you know, cost increase because we've got a shorter time frame there. Uh, you know, Commissioner, you're suggesting, I think, that maybe if we were to wait a little bit, we might see better market conditions and get lower bids in. I mean, I, I don't know how to predict that. I don't know who does know how to predict that. Um, but I have the opposite concern that if we um, bump up against pet deadlines uh, too closely, we're going to run into um, higher costs. So um, I don't know who at MSC, I mean, have, have you guys done some of those kinds of analyses to f try to figure that out? Or, is, or are we just kind of clicking along? In terms along? of, uh, it, yeah, if if the market is going to drive costs down or up, I think everyone yeah. is here about, you know, about that. And we've been looking at a lot of different drivers of, you know, at MSD, not just construction projects, but revenue. And okay. uh, it's really hard right now to predict. So if Madam President, if I could just make one additional comment. So if we added the million on and expanded our area of where we uh, put the bids out to, uh, we may, uh, we could possibly not even spend that extra million if we expand who we're, um, whatever area we went to get the bid. I know it's a specific task, but we may end up not even spending the million, correct? Diana? Oh, it's that to me. Yes, uh, that's correct. We, um, again, the, the market will come, you know, the bids will come in and we would award mm -hmm. less bidder. So, yes, that's correct. Okay. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Madam President, yes. If I Go could, ahead, so I guess the, the question that I'm hearing from the board is, uh, and I don't know whether whether Michael or, or Jack uh, perhaps can, can opine on, on this, but um, you know, from an administration's perspective, I think we would concur that the project needs to, to move forward. This is a bridge project with a substantial completion uh, deadline date um, that I think we should be very cognizant of. I guess what I'm hearing from the board, though, is, is and we know that if, if a project in, under the revised code and under for public improvements comes in over 10 percent, the project over the engineer's estimate, the project has to be rebid. Is there a legal requirement that the appropriation has to be made prior to rebidding, or is it is that is it only required that the appropriation be in place before the contract is let? Mm, good question. Because I, I don't know that there's much of a of an issue with uh, at least I'm not hearing from the board necessarily. Um, uh, I think everyone wants to hit the the completion deadline. I'm just wondering if the appropriation is necessary to put in place at this time or uh, to just appropriate when the when the bids come in. If it's legally required under the ORC that the appropriation accompany the bid, then I 
say we just move forward with everything, but um, just asking that question. So I don't know, Jack or Michael? Jack, this is Mike. Um, I, I, you know, I, I, I'm not sure that it is um, required. I, I would have to, to look into it to give you a 100% answer. Um, th there are certain inherent risks if it is, if it is legally permissible. There are certainly inherent risks with putting out a project um, and then if something were to happen and the decision was made not to appropriate it, uh, the funding for it, um, certainly there are some legal problems then. Um, so to the extent that it is um, legally mandated that they be, um, the money be appropriated before the bid, I, I don't know. I, I don't believe so, but I, I really would have to check on that. And Jack, I don't know if you've had any experience in the past on that. Yes, uh, commissioners and, and administrator. Um, sorry, my computer rebooted itself. Um, the uh, my understanding, it, it, from both the, the city and the and the uh, county's perspective, um, is that the funds have to be um, appropriated prior to any bidding taking place. So that is traditionally the way we have always done it. I I, I can't recall if we ever been asked that question before so i'm hesitant to give a hundred percent but i can certainly tell you in the past that has been the practice that we have always um operated under uh, madam president um if yeah. I, I may uh certainly want the bridge to be built there's no question about that uh certainly will approve the funds for the building of the bridge but i'd like to have clarification on that issue that jeff brought up i think is a great uh a great comment and that um, I don't know, we the money is going to be um, appropriated, uh, but whether or not we have to do it uh, before it goes out for bid again, um, I would certainly like to know that be, and would not want to uh, vote a no because I don't know. If they say we have to do it, fine, but I would feel much more comfortable having clarification on that issue. Um, so I, yes, Commissioner. Part. It would appear to me that the money needs to be appropriated before we ask somebody to bid on it. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. so, you know, because it's, uh, you know, as, as they do the work to formulate the bid, they have to know that the money is there. So in my mind, uh, what, you know, my question was, why was uh, the actual cost so much higher? Mm -hmm than what was estimated. So that was my concern. And um, and why can't we delay it? And it's because of the consent decree that, that we have a need to complete this project before the end of the year. And right now, we are three to four months behind already. Mm -hmm. And so with that in mind, um, you know, with it going back out, I'm, I'm, I'm good with it. Uh, Madam President, okay. yeah, uh, we do have the, the money is there. We have millions and millions of dollars for MSD. So there's no question of whether or not the money is there. So us putting out a bid uh, does not uh, indicate that we don't have good faith that it's going to be paid. My question is whether or not it has to be appropriated uh, before it goes out. So everybody will get paid. MSD has lots of money. And so that's not a question. My, um, I just would a million dollars is a million dollars. And so we need to be, you know, just very cognizant of whoever comes forth for additional funding. So I'm, 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 uh, that's all I have to say. Okay, thank you. Um, so I think, thanks, um, Diana. One, uh, my, I agree with Commissioner Parsons. We need to do it, we need to do it. And we're already behind. So, I am not um, keen on any kind of delay here, physical delay um, completion project. But the other uh, thing that, that I personally am worried about is what are the projects are out there that um, are still waiting to go out for bid or are out for bid. And, uh, and how, I mean, I feel as though um, we need to do them as quickly as possible. And so I, I hope, and I, I don't want to speak to my colleagues, but 
um, as you know, we move through this weird time, this very uncertain time, uh, I'm hopeful that um, we can move these things through as quickly as possible to get them going. Uh, because the last thing we need is delays on some of these projects that are bridge projects, and to my understanding, agreed to by all. Um, so, um, Karen Ball, I know you're on. Do you have any additional comments to this? I mean, if, if we move forward with the appropriation of the million at this time, knowing that we uh, need to answer the question raised by Commissioner Samaro Dumas for future reference. Um, is that your recommendation? Um, I do have some additional comment. And, and yes, I said that this is a bridge project. We, we, we do believe that it, it should move forward. I want to let you also know that we explored whether this, the market conditions had anything to do with COVID. And if so, would it sit under the force majeure that we've um, uh, already notified the regulators um, that there may be some issues that come um, because of the COVID? Uh, MSD is, is certain that um, COVID had less of an impact than the compressed schedule. Um, so with that, we will be moving forward now to your other um, question about additional construction to come forward for bridge projects. Um, as you may recall, there were several projects that needed to go to construction, uh, one of them being the Mill Creek uh, Interceptor Improvement. We have funded that for construction, um, and that is already underway, well underway. I think the schedule looks pretty good for, for what we're required to do there. Um, we also have uh, 40 three to 408 CSO improvements down along the Muddy Creek. And that I believe has also been funded for construction at this point. Um, other bridge activities were right away acquisition, design be done, completed. Um, I couldn't, while we were on this, um, the, the meeting itself, could not think of another construction requirement that we have beyond this project. Matt is on the call as well, and if, if he knows of anything, I've, you know, uh, I think the others fall under either design or property acquisition. Uh, for Matt? Bridge, hi, Karen. How are you? Hi. Bridge project, yes. Yeah, for bridge projects, uh, well, the, the board had heard our request uh, in late April, I believe it was, for Columbia Square. Uh, development separation, and that's out to bid as we speak. Those bids are scheduled yep. to open next Thursday, May 14th, week from today. And then another upcoming bridge project that has not been presented to the board just yet is the CSO 513 uh, sewer separation. That's in the city of Reading. The Reading Road. Yeah, Reading. Reading. Exactly. We are wrapping up right of way. That and That's another impact that we've had. Our right-of-way process has been taking a little longer because folks aren't, as we all are sitting at home or you know working remotely, for some of us, that it's been a little tougher to uh, acquire some right-of-way. So that construction legislation has not been brought to the board just yet or the county team. We will, we will continue to, um, to, to take a look at whether COVID, COVID has an impact on the project and so any potential that we have to um, notify the regulators of a force majeure, force majeure event, if that is uh, in fact the case at some point. So we'll be we'll be real, really careful to, to take a look at that and make sure that um, we're exploring all options. And if we can get any uh, reprieve from the compressed schedule for, you know, for reasons verified to be COVID, we will we will do so. Okay. Okay. Uh, Madam, Madam President, yeah. just one last question. Um, Diana, when do you guys plan on opening up the bid again, the bidding process? Um, in regards to um, the bid schedule, uh, once the additional funds, yeah, Sorry. once the additional funds are appropriated, uh, this project, um, it's dictated by, uh, it's probably three or four weeks. I don't know specifically how long it needs to be out for that as you know yeah the, the state minimum is two weeks uh the first right. time we did it it was four weeks uh yes. the ones that opened on may uh april 2nd excuse me uh mm -hmm. on our rebid 
we may reduce that time just because of the schedule crunch. So our hope is uh, based on the outcome of today that we may rebid, you know, advertise next week. Let me look at the calendar here. I guess our hope would be to open bid by the end of the month of May. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. Okay. okay. Maybe at the latest, that first week of June, the week of June 1st. Mm -hmm. So, Matt, do you know if the construction it schedule is? The duration, I, I don't know it offhand, uh, the, 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 the date or the duration in the bid documents. Um, I can get that to you, Karen. I honestly just don't know it offhand. So, that okay. gives Thank you. clarification. Uh, Madam President, on the issue that I had, um, because I certainly would like to um, be affirmative in my vote if we could get some clarification, at least um, by next week. Um, uh, I, with all due respect, I'm not inclined to delay this, okay. only because we're, I, I don't want to um, cause any delay to the project itself. Um, so I, I understand your question, and I think we need some clarification from our legal department as to you know how this process moving forward can work related to you know the money being in place or not. Um, but I, I, with all deference to you, would really prefer to move forward with this one just because we're up against the time crunch, and we've got the regulators to worry about as well. well uh, if we were to run them, you think one week will delay them being able to open up the bids if i could uh, get clarification on the issue of a million dollars and whether or not we have to well yeah I, I i hear i hear them saying yes there will be a, a that it'll be a one week delay so and I, it's only you know look the deadline's coming and we're already behind on this one so that's my anxiety about um, okay. delaying the yeah so uh, all right so diana um as far as the motion itself, um, I've got a number of resolutions in front of me. Uh, so help me out here. Are you are you aware of what's in front I, of us on the agenda? I, um, the, in terms of the legislation itself, yeah. Uh, um, I, can, I can help you address it. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm, I'm about to pull it up. I apologize. I By Lee Perry. Perry. By Lee okay. Perry. So what, what the requests are is to uh, amend the existing um, detail plan specifications, estimate of cost, necessity resolution, and to appropriate an additional um, $1,062,000 uh, to all right, so Michael, um, I am look. I'm looking at the item itself on the agenda, and then I'm also looking at the uh, background documents. And there are a number of resolutions there. So, am I safe if I am reading off of the agenda for by leave number three? Does that capture it? The title that is printed there for by leave three. Yep. Yes, I, I would just clarify that you are moving to approve by leave number three. State that and say that it is the, um, the packet of resolutions um, that are um, as okay. part of that by leave. All right. In that case, I will move that we approve of sanitary sewer number 6909 SSO 700 STF disinfection improvements, resolutions amending and approving the detailed plan specifications, estimate of cost and or other relevant documents amending the resolution declaring the necessity to construct an additional appropriation. So that is the motion. And I uh, want to note that we've got a number of resolutions associated with this by leave item. Uh, and we're moving to approve of those documents as well. So move. Second. Commissioner uh, Driehaus? Yes. Commissioner Samarduma? Uh, due to the inability of clarification on expenditures of $1 million at this time, I vote no. Uh, Commissioner Park. Yes. All right, thank you. Um, Diana, before you go, I heard on the news that um, MSD is uh, working with EPA 
to do some investigative work um, at our facilities. And so I was surprised to hear that on the news, but I'm hoping that you can elaborate. Yes, thank you, Commissioner Driehaus. Um, uh, as you may know, uh, we have a longstanding relationship with the EPA Research and Deve Development um, Facility here in Cincinnati. Um, and in fact, they have a, um, a small division that is housed at our at Mill Creek plant um, that, they, that has been there um, on our campus. There's a, a, a US EPA facility um, that has uh, laboratory and um, research taking place uh, on a routine basis. So we have a, a close relationship with them and do um, various research studies um, involving our wastewater and our treatment process. Um, I do have uh, Bruce Smith on today to provide an, um, a, a little overview of this current project, but this is, um, the EPA has been looking at wastewater and um, looking at uh, uh, sampling wastewater for early detection of the coronavirus in um, the untreated wastewater. So that is um, what was, uh, uh, the news stories were about and that um, those samples are being shared with EPA this week as part of a larger study that is taking place across the country. Um, so Bruce Smith is our assistant superintendent of our regulatory compliance and safety division who works with EPA on a number of um, these types of projects. So uh, Bruce was gonna give you a quick overview of what they're doing. If Thank you. you. Thanks. Good afternoon. Thank you all uh, for your interest. Definitely. I, I just briefly wanted to, to let you know what we were trying to do. MSD's role, uh, outline what the concept is and um, maybe uh, some of the, the, the least initial constraints. So really what we're trying to do, uh, known as wastewater-based epidemiology, uh, we want to be able to provide actionable data to public health officials uh, so they can make real decisions based on real data. We hope to identify what some call the silent circulation of, of the virus, uh, the coronavirus, as I'm sure we've all heard, the, the asymptomatic cases hide the actual uh, uh, rate of infection in the community. Uh, we hope to be able to tease some of that out with, with uh, by analyzing wastewater and then uh, identify potentially clusters in the community so that in before overt systems are seen, uh, spikes in hospitalization, et cetera, uh, they, we, we can um, perhaps take some, some uh, action and the public health officials can, can make those decisions. MSD's role is uh, initially to provide composite samples, 24-hour composite samples of our raw wastewater from our seven major facilities to the EPA. We also uh, are providing information on our system. Um, um, I, I, I sent along a, a map that we have prepared. I don't know if you can, can uh, bring that map up. It's one type of piece of data that, that we, uh, we overlaid our uh, sewer shed boundaries with the current uh, COVID cases uh, it, by zip code so we could start to get a feel for that. Uh, that's just part of, of uh, the, the data that we're sharing. Um, in the future, we may go back into our collection system and identify some, some sentry points that would give us that, that uh, um, um, immediate response or, or near immediate response uh, uh, that, that then we could provide uh, that to the public health officials, um, you know, perhaps around hospitals uh, or, or nursing homes, but uh, we, we still have some analysis to do on, on what would be good sentry points. The general concept uh, um, really is we, we know that the, the SARS-CoV-2 organism is shed in body waste. Um, and by, by collecting the, uh, the, the, uh, a composite sample, it's really uh, what so-called a, a community swab, if you will. Um, so, and, and at least initial uh, studies say we can 
uh, uh, monitor that to, to very low levels, the, the, the samples will be taken, we'll, uh, uh, the US EPA will concentrate the biological material and then uh, uh, take that and, and uh, uh, do a molecular analysis, really a gene sequencing to uh, um, determine the, the viral particles. I'll point out that the study is not about uh, finding out the viability of the, the, the virus, meaning we won't be, be culturing it and, and seeing if it survives. Uh, our best information from the CDC is that it's very vulnerable uh, virus in our wastewater and that it, 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 uh, in, in wastewater it's not uh, terribly infectious. Uh, uh, but we'll, we, we, we will, I know US EPA in concert with CDC will be looking a little bit more at that. Uh, there are some significant unknowns. Our initial steps are, are about methodology, but we don't have a great in knowledge of who sheds, how much they shed, when they shed in the, in the, uh, the, the, the infection, but, but uh, uh, we will be looking at trends that we get. We'll be sampling once a week. And, and develop trends, and uh, um, uh, hopefully, and the intent is to be able to to get data that we don't have because we can't provide enough testing for for everyone. There are a number of other uh, um, uh, detailed issues about the methodology. I'm happy to to go into if you want, but I wanted to be brief. And uh, if you had some questions, maybe I could answer. So. To what degree um, do you need to see something? Uh, like, for, uh, what I'm, I'm thinking is that um, the number of people that would test positive um, at this moment in time, I guess, depending on uh, the geography of, of the wastewater that's being tested, uh, how many people need to be positive before you see a positive result? Well, that, and, and we want to try to. To, to tease that out of the data, I can give you a, an example. The Dutch did uh, some some analysis early on in in their wave of infection, and they uh, give you a, a, a range of say one in a hundred thousand. Now there's some caveats to that I could get into, but it can it apparently can detect pretty low levels if, if, to, to answer the general question that if you had one infection known in a hundred thousand you might be able to, to see that in your wastewater I think what it probably means is that you have one positive test and there are a number of asymptomatics that go with that but those that that's the kind of kind of level of detection that we we, we hope to, to duplicate if uh, does that answer your question or it, it it does. I'm I'm struck by that number. <laughs> if the number is one, <laughs> um, that that's really um, that's that's remarkable. Um, so all right, yeah, that's very interesting. Um, commissioners, any uh, questions or comments related to this? Yeah, uh, Madam President, um, thank you for yeah. what all your uh, getting started to do. And I, I heard Diana say that she MSD has had a relationship with EPA for quite a while, so so that's really good. Um, I was just wondering, sir, if you had, are you coordinating with the waterworks also uh, with this? Because I know they test water all the time for all kinds of elements. So are they involved in this coordination? This particular uh, study, not so much. It, uh, um, uh, the, the, the drinking water folks love to point out there, they stay clean and <laughs> we're on the dirty side what we're looking for really is that the the shedding from from uh from specific. body waste and so it, it it's really specific to that that's the 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 advantage of sewage <laughs> right right well, i had gotten, Don't hear that for you. Yeah, I had gotten <laughs> a couple calls from waterworks as it relates to but they were asking me, well, why are we not involved? Because we test for lead and we test for other things. So, okay, I was just wanting to, to have that answer. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. may, I, may I add something, commissioners? This is Karen. Sure. Uh -huh. Karen sure. Okay. Um, I, I just wanted to add that um, the, the county had the foresight uh, about five years ago to fund uh, improvements 
to the the lab facilities at um, the MSC, and in, in order to get NELAC certified um, and be able to be accredited for some of the activities that they continue to do on a daily basis, this being you know an add on to that, but it also does give much credibility to. Uh, the data that comes out of the facility because of the improvements that were made. Uh, and they wrapped up about five years ago, I think, four or five years ago. So Great. Bruce is working in the new facility with the lots of new high-tech equipment um, and uh, accredited procedures in place. Great. Mm -hmm. And our thanks to you Thank all. You. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Parks? Um, yes, thank you, Madam President. Mr. Bruce Smith. You have a really interesting job. And yeah, I, yes. I, like, I like that you're so excited about it. So thank you. Uh, th thank you. Yes, it, it, it is exciting. <laughs> that right? I, I know wastewater. It's so exciting. Yes. <laughs> interesting. Anyway, um, I, so my obvious question for you is: uh, I don't. When you say you're working with public health, is that uh, both the city of Cincinnati public health and Hamilton County public health? I'll be honest, it's the, 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 and maybe unfortunately less than we would hope, but it's really been mostly uh, with the, city. the county health department as well as the state health department. Uh, uh, and we hope to do more. Uh, one of the, the things we want to do is, is start with having some data, um, but we're getting their data in terms of just COVID uh, uh, cases. And uh, again, I, I sent a map along that was that could maybe illustrate that. But yes, our our future work, uh, uh, we see this data for them as uh, uh, much as anything. And okay. you know, I, it, I, a number of people have reached out to me uh, uh, already. Uh, say, hey, can we too? L lots of hands in the air <laughs> to, to oh, do it. The and, map. And, there you go. That that was the the uh, what we had uh, we but so the so the dark lines are our sewer sheds um, and the the shaded uh, um, purple blue whatever that color is uh, uh, are the, uh, the 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 known COVID cases. This is a couple of weeks old. I, I had had a hadn't updated this uh, map yet, but uh, but it it can tell you how we're trying to see what. Uh, uh, what our data will tell us overlaying with uh, uh, the, the known cases and how we might relate that uh, in the future. Okay, yeah, because this map is, that is the public, county public health map, right? With the Correct, cases. We, and, and we, we get, uh, got the data from this, this uh, Ohio Department of Health, but it's county data, yes, yeah. it's, it's county yeah. specific okay. data. All right. Well, thank you for the update. Please keep us in the loop. Um, again, I was uh, didn't know about this until I heard it on the news. So uh, glad to be a partner in all of this. But please keep us in the loop as you get data in and you analyze it and try to understand better what it means. Um, and I'm glad to hear that Greg Kesterman is um, part of the effort here. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you to MSC. All right, um, let's move on to our consent agenda. We've got four items. Commissioners, are there any questions related to these items? I have no questions or comments. No questions, thank you. All right, I'm gonna move that we approve of consent agenda items one through four. Second. Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Commissioner Samarduma? Yes. Commissioner Park? Yes. Thank you. Um, anybody else? I, I, there, we have nothing else before us today. Um, this was a deceivingly long meeting for such a short agenda, by the way. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it Sorry about that. Oh, that's the way it goes. Um, so, um, Administrator, anything else that we need to take up? Uh, nothing else at this time. All right. Commissioners, anything else? I don't have anything. Thank you. Nothing. Thank okay. you. Very good. All right. We will uh, see you uh, in a week. Um, oh, by the way, I've been asked by the clerk to start to think about the summer schedule. Um, so uh, look for that in your email 
inbox, we'll uh, send something around that will probably be similar to what we did last year. It's it's weird to think of that in the time of COVID, um, but but we will. Uh, and so uh, we'll be sending something out uh, shortly for your comments uh, mm -hmm. related to our summer schedule. So thank you all. I'm going to move to adjourn. Second. Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Commissioner Samaraduma? Yes. Commissioner Park? Yes. Thank you all.